out of Zach's slide presentations is that we should throw all cars into dumpsters. Um, so, but instead of doing whatever it was that Zach was talking about, I'm going to recommend. <clears throat> <clears throat> and now, some nobodies presents PowerPoint Showdown, where each presenter arrives unprepared and just has to do their best. Without further ado, this week's keynote speaker. Hey, it's me. I will be your keynote speaker. Uh, my name is Zach, and I got my schedule wrong. I thought we were coming to this conference hall for uh, the very last furry convention, which is what Dylan put on our schedule. Mm -hmm. Turns out, PowerPoint presentation. But thank you for joining this. <laughs> this is my favorite conference. Uh, tonight, you're going to hear four professionals discuss our topic, the rise and fall of cursive writing. With me, as always, are obviously myself. You also have Mr. Grumpy Dylan, and that's not a joke. This dude is grumpy today for some yeah. reason. I'm not even going to ask him any questions. We also have Mr. M Mr. M Michael Colby, uh, the jazz hands Michael Colby. That's uh, right, baby. <laughs> and uh, amazing uh, special guest of the week. We have Mr. Jeff Dwoskin from live from Detroit. Jeff Dwoskin. <laughs> but I'm going to be your keynote speaker leading this conference. And for those joining us for the first time, each speaker will be giving a 10 minute presentation on our topic of the week. After each presentation, there'll be a short Q and a from the panel. And after the fourth presentation, the pan uh, pa <laughs> panelists, that's not right. The panelists will vote to see which speaker will be awarded a $50,000 scholarship to some nobody's university and the nostalgia prize of the week that has been donated by some of our Patreon members. And let's see what we got this week. Um, sorry, I should have opened this first. Oh my God. Okay. This is crazy. Uh, apparently we have the, en the entire land before time on VHS set. Uh, you get one through, okay, yeah, one through thirteen. It's the entire set on VHS. So there are uh, fourteen movies. Oh, but only the first six are worth. Oh, the, the the last one, the great, the, the long migration. It's a double. Oh, okay. It's a double VHS tape. Okay. Yet. It came out like Titanic. It is a stunning one. Um, and you know, without further ado, I'm going to deliver our first uh, presentation. And the script says open presentation. So, like I said. This is uh, the rise and fall of cursive writing. Now, why is it imperative to teach our children cursive? That's the one thing that people are asking everybody these days. And if you open up your email, one in the very five is about cursive writing. And why are we doing this? Why are we taking the time? And I'll tell you why. It's tests. Tests are the reason we're taking cursive. I don't know why that is, but that's just the answer. And let's get into it. So next slide, please. Now, a brief history of cursive script. Were they lazy? Were they fancy? Was it to save our hands from cramping? Or was it something else entirely? Now, what we don't, what you don't know, or maybe don't know, depending on your knowledge of cursive writing, was cursive writing was invented roughly around 4 BC, uh, right around when the English language came on. But our hands were tinier then, and we actually had to get our own hands from somebody else. So it wasn't your individual hands that were using for writing. It was the hands of others that you had to find. Those hands were getting tired, and that's how laziness started. What was it really? Now, this diagram doesn't show exactly what I was trying to say, but you can see that at one point we were walking with the help of others until we sat down. We're lazy. Migration equals laziness. Next slide, please. Gotcha. All right, now, a sinister origin. A lot of people know where glue comes from, but what you don't know is cursive actually comes from the horse's mouth itself. Uh, horses, if you don't know, they don't have thumbs. So early on, when it came to training for Hollywood, for circus riding, we had to teach the horse a way to talk to us, to let us know. So we put paint brushes full of manure and other dirty things in a horse's mouth and let it just kind of paint. But what we found out was that it was writing a cursive. But no one knew how to read it because that was the origin. We're going to get to how that comes into play later. Next slide, please. Now, to continue, please complete this capture. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you guys to click each image that's containing a truck. Uh, now, if you do this over and over again, because we're going to get this wrong a couple of times, what your finger is going to create is the cursive word for love. And that's what caption happens, because it takes your time. And identity theft is, I guess, the antithesis of love. 
cursive writing is the antithesis of everything. Next slide, please. Now, cursive was created. Uh, uh, cursive was created as a method to identify time traveling and robots hiding among us, just like captures, but for normal people with human hands. Now, what I have here is I put together a pretty simple diagram of the progress in creating robots, uh, which. Ironically, cursive came right in the very middle of that. And it was because robots started understanding all form of print. And we had to kind of trick the robots. What we did was we just slurred our words together. Like a good American, just slurring things together and cramping it and just showing a level of ignorance and laziness. And the robots caught on eventually. And unfortunately, and I don't think anyone can read this, so there's no point in me taking my time to, to read what it says down here. Uh, is, is it important what it says down there? Probably. No, no, I'll tell you what, now what I did down here, and I wasn't going to get into this because obviously I'm not going to translate all of this, but just as unimportant as cursive is, so is Latin. So I left this lipsum ipsum down here at the bottom just to show you guys that it doesn't matter what is written down there. If it's in cursive, nobody cares. Next slide, please. Now here's a timeline of important events, and I hope you've been keeping track of the things that I've been saying. I said 4 BC earlier. And I said things about migration. What I didn't mention yet is the American Revolution. Now, Thomas Jefferson writes the Declaration of Independence in a looped and connected script. Why does he do that? He doesn't want people to read over his shoulder. It's easy to understand letter by letter what somebody's trying to say. Then you start finishing their sentences and everyone loves that. What he did was he decided to fool everybody. And he was slowly... Oh, that's an oh, oh, you can't tell what that is. And that's how that went. Now, up until 2025, when Twitter 2.0 came out, uh, or T2, um, now that was brought online, claiming to be a social media network enhanced by an intelligent AI. Now, cursive, as it used to be known as script, turned into coding as script writing. Uh, the only problem is that got very confused with prescriptions. And as we all know, the opioid is a terrible uh, uh, thing going on right now. So we're not going to go into that. Now, over here in 2028, we have desolation. Now, the earth is going to be a barren wasteland inhabited only by the dead and the machines. How will cursive come into play there? You got to wait and find out, my friend. Next slide, please. Now, the founding fathers tried to warn us they wrote many things in cursive, but like I said, other than horses, many people didn't understand what was written. They just saw these loops and sometimes dots and slashes through some things. And it took up until roughly the 1880s to understand even what was on the Declaration of Independence. Turns out half of it was okay. Um, but they tried to warn us early on back then that cursive is not going to be worth it in the future. Next slide, please. Now, in conclusion... It takes a thoughtful eye and a, a, a wild angle to understand why cursive is still being put in here. And I'm trying to illustrate here that the side eye is at the cursive. I understand you're there, cursive, but why are you there? Similar to uh, a, a very large-headed man in a, in a Prius looking at me while I'm on my bike. I got to give him a side eye. Like, I know you're there. You're allowed to be there. But why are you there? Why are you there, cursive? Are you there for tests? Are you there for the declarations? Are you there to make sure the robots don't understand what we're trying to say out of sheer laziness? I don't know. All I know is, if we could bring that first slide back up, please. Why it's imperative to our children cursive. I hope I made my point very clear. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I will take every and all questions, please. It is I think I was supposed to put some of those words in different order, but yes, please. Um, Grumpy Dylan. Um, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, you're um, welcome. Could you further elaborate on how robots and horses are the reason that we need to teach our kids cursive? Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm sure we've all seen the video of that four legged uh, robot that humans are trying to push over and shove down steps and make it try to trip over stumps in the woods. Uh, and it's because it was slowly trying to learn itself cursive. Now, other than the horses, which we've clearly dominated, we understand how to control a horse. It's easy. You do that thing with the rope around your head, you put a hat on, and you put it inside of a fence, you own that thing. Now it can paint slash write cursive. We don't know how to control those robots yet. You can't put a cute hat on and keep those robots under control. So I think I've been 
amply clear about that. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Michael Colby, please. Yeah, Daddy O, you said that uh, you, you did a whole slide, but you didn't say anything about Thomas Jefferson hmm. being a robot. Do you want to elaborate on Thomas Jefferson being a robot? He has red glowing eyes. Was he a Terminator? No, he was not. He was an everyday humanoid, half robot, half human, uh, born in the 1700s. Um, and I believe he, they call those cyborgs. That's not a question. I'm not I'm going to ignore it. Uh, now, what happens here is that he was the first robot to try to learn cursive but was also stricken with humanity, which means he's lazy. So, no. Any more questions, please? Mm. Excellent. Oh, I hope you guys understand how rough this was, trying to teach people why or why not to do cursive writing through the rise and the falls, peaks and valleys of cursive writing. Now, up next, we have a special guest, Mr. Jeff Dwoskin from the CIA. Now, if we can just go ahead and bring up Mr. Mm. Dwoskin's slide. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, it's good to be here. Uh, I am Jeff Dwoskin and a uh, handwriting expert. I've been studying handwriting for the last 25 years. I've developed many signature strokes throughout the year. I'm known for my strokes that I'm able to do, whether in public or private. And a lot of them have been adapted in many of the common core state standards for writing across the country. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And today we're going to talk a little bit about cursive writing. The idea here is how to bring it back from the dead and how to take what is known as the lazy man's writing and try to make you understand why it was done that way and how we can breathe new life into it. Next slide, please. <clears throat> The timeline of cursive is a fascinating thing. This writing itself has been around as long as the world itself. Adam and Eve were known to have also had a way to communicate through writing. The Egyptians are known through their hieroglyphics, which I know most people are very, very familiar with. It just made it difficult to communicate when everything had to be about either birds or snakes or latrines. So it did, it, uh, over time, as language evolved and they learned how to draw new things, they sort of came into that known. So if you go back all the way to 3200 BC, and I'm going to kind of skip around, I'm not going to cover every single point, but at 3200 BC, when language was written, it was originally just dots. This is where eventually Morse code got evolved from many, many, many years later and how people communicated through simple blinking, which I'll now show you. I just asked you what time is it because I need to take my medicine. Anyway, so it wasn't until like 4 AD that cursive even started. And they call it a lazy man's writing because generally, if you ever do print something, you'll know how exhausting it is to lift your pen if you're writing, say, a, le a word like help, and to go from an H to an E to an L to a P, right, just right there, you've burned 3,200 calories. I mean, that's just facts. That's science. There's nothing that even you can dispute. So what they found is as far back as 4 AD, and this is with a quill and ink from uh, a quail, is uh, they use blood of a bird. Anyway, that's a different thing. Anyway, so if you were to actually put the pen to the paper, you don't even have to lift. You don't have to lift. You just kind of, it's kind of a swoof. So that's that's why it's called the lazy man's handwriting. And uh, that's why it's, it's, though lazy is a much more efficient way to write. So, and people got a lot fatter because they stopped burning the calories that they were burning from print. So it had like its ups and downs and it's gone, you know, pros and cons throughout the years. Next slide. So most of you are familiar um, 
with my my three books uh one cursive i started um <laughs> well writing my three books one cursive oh oh i don't understand that is that even a word is that a sentence i was i must have been on drugs when i wrote this hmm. uh well writing my anyway i wrote three books and one of them i wrote in cursive i think that's what i meant to say and so it was hard because you know with printing presses they don't they need you to print it's usually typed i mean it's it's kind of old school, but you know, like I like always used to tell the printers, Hey, I do it for AD style. So, you know, kind of roll with me. So anyway, the whole idea though, like is the difference between writing print and writing in cursive. It's, it's one is so compact. It's so compact and really kind of tight. And like in cursive, it's so freeing. It's, it's just floating. You're like, it's almost like, like you're on a cloud. Clever. I Googled cloud and that's what I found. Next slide. So cursive. <laughs> Curs <laughs> so originally the interesting thing about cursive is that originally it was created when the people came over in 4AD. And a lot of people don't know this, but it was the Mesopotamians that came over and they hated the Italians. And so when they would create this language that they were scripting together, which at first, to, let's be honest, just looked like squigglies. They were moving from birds and latrines and snakes that the Egyptians had taught them and just trying to kind of combine this into like some kind of word. So when they obviously went to their people and said, this is the new language, this is how we're gonna write. And they scoffed, immediately said, Haha, we're kidding, you know, the Italians told us to do this. So, you know, it's like a buona duce abrata tomato sauce. You know, that's that's basically, mm -hmm. you know, what it was a common phrase back then that people would just say that about where writing was at that time, right? So if you're gonna say, Hey, I'm gonna write stuff in cursive, you know, that's where the it, it, you know, just kind of hey. What's going on? I'm going to write something. You know, so I about to do Chi. You know, that's it's it got really kind of crazy. So that's why at one point the cursive was really just for the young people, right? The older people were just kind of ignoring it because one, the older people had really disdain for the Italians at the time, and the young people were trying to make a difference in the world. Next slide. So, so being left-handed, th there's an interesting thing with being right-handed and cursive. Cursive is the curse for a left-handed person. So if you're writing with your left hand, you drag, you drag. So like when you see like these left-handed stores and like they're all like left-handed books and you scoff at them and you laugh at us left-handed people, it's because you've never had the problem of having to get ink off your, off your hand. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Although the boy and the Ducci as they would say, to scoff <laughs> at the Italians. <clears throat> anyway, so, you know, but that is that is why this is a world of right-handed people and why right-handed people tend to use pencils, but always are shoving the pens onto the left-handed people. It's just to humiliate us. So anyway, all this I uncovered in an email that I hacked from the GOP, which was sent to them from the QAnon servers. So I know it's true because I heard it on Sean Hannity. Anyway, to quote Tucker Carlson, <laughs> cursive is the way of the future. Hmm. Next slide. So it's funny because like, as, as we sort of phase out of the whole concept of cursive, the younger people and the new generations have to deal with the residue of the older generations. And the only way that really is ever going to fix itself is when they all die. <laughs> so the whole idea of grandma and grandpa still even writing checks instead of Venmoing you is just something that we're just going to have to live out, right? Let's just face it, though. They're old. They don't have much time. COVID probably took most of them, but now we're going to have to sit around and wait for the rest. And then and when that finally comes, though, there will be cash without cursive. There, you don't have to worry about that. There's plenty of alternatives. That's where technology, which has made people lazy in general, has done wonders for the transfer of funds. Next slide. <laughs> so 
the reason there's no cursive numbers, which is like, it's funny. Like this is what, every time I'm at a party, this is what people always say, Jeff, cursive's so great and awesome. How come there's no cursive numbers? It's because cursive numbers are already in cursive. I know it doesn't even make sense. It's meta though. They're already in cursive. So there's no reason they have a cursive number. Those were the first things. The entire language of writing was based on the numbers. So there was no reason to redo them. There was one story, and this is like in the late 1900s, where one guy was like, hey, let's redo a three. It looks too much like a backwards E. And then everyone else is like, mm, and then finally he kind of just, so that's why, that's why we never heard about it, but it is documented. It is documented. And, you know, it's not that lefties can't do cursive. It's just, it's just, it's just, we're better at it if we can sort of lift our hands up, but that's why it's the ink. It's really the ink thing. It's just, it's just sloppy for left-handed people. It's, it's not that we don't do it well. It's that we shun it based on, uh, mm -hmm. just it not really being, you know, you can't get it on your, have you ever like, just like gone out and let's say you're at an Italian restaurant. You're like, I need to eat the mad spaghetti. Right. And like, and you're like, get it all over you. And then like, you can't go, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, except it's on your hand and then you get it on everything else. And then, you know, then your, your grandma gets mad. Your mom gets mad. Everyone gets mad. Anyway, I, I've gone on too long about that. Next slide. <laughs> In conclusion, the whole idea of writing and the need for cursive it's just, it is just like a little smack in the face. It's like fighting against everything that you believe to be true, but need to work through, right? So it's that time in your life when things are coming at you hard and you got to know to do the right thing, even though it's easier to not do that thing. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, if we are taking if we are yeah. taking questions, I think we do have a couple questions for celebrity panelist Jeff Tawaskin. Oh, do I call on you, Grumpy Dylan? Okay, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, very thorough. Um, you mentioned that once cursive was implemented, people lost weight. Now, with the uh, introduction of the aerobic pen, do you think that that was partially reversed? No, actually, I said the opposite. I said when people learned cursive, they they gained weight and the, the actual benefits of print um, were where the weight loss and calorie burn came from. So my mistake. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we actually do have a comment from the audience. If we can get a producer out in the audience with a microphone, Mr. Blue Shoe Nick uh, says, yes, Mr. CIA, what is your favorite cursive word to write in cursive? And in today's popular culture, is it possible to have a curse swerve? Yeah, I mean anything's possible. So I mean the 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 best word, if you really want to get into the whole cursive thing, practice on the word aluminum. Aluminum is the hardest word to write in cursive. So if you really want to kind of grasp it and take it on, that's that's where I focus. I do believe Blue Shoes Nick asked what your favorite curse word to write in cursive was. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought I said, what's my favorite word to write in cursive? Okay. Uh, well, obviously. Jesus Christ, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I told you. The, um, my favorite curse word is, is anything that doesn't start with an S. So mm. I'm going to go with, um, yeah, I didn't cover it in the, in the presentation, but the, the S in cursive is so difficult. For, f for 400 years, uh, nobody named their kids anything that started with an S. So that's why you don't see a lot of. Sebastian, Santiago, Simon, Stevens, et cetera, Stephanie's uh, during most of the the era of, of cursive. But anyway, my favorite is uh, it's probably just uh, hell. I, th I like hell because I just I like the, the double L. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Zach. Now, er earlier on, you said that you, uh, I guess, created your own strokes that you could do either uh, in the privacy of your own home or out in public. Uh, would you mind uh, explaining one of your most famous strokes? Yeah. Yeah. Like in the camera, catch my hand. It's like, oh, yeah. uh, like, like most of the people like would do an L sort of like this, but I find doing L's like this, right? Mm. If you're like, you can really kind of get that whole loop going. 
Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then Beautiful. there's, there's always, um, yeah, uh, you know, if you're going to like S's, a lot of S's, like mm. there's a lot of words, like, you know, we can go, you know, like, like that. So that's, nice. anyway, those were just yeah. some of the strokes. Well, that was beautiful. Thank you very much, Mr. Dwoskin. We definitely appreciate it. And uh, now we have, uh, let's see, we're going to go to Mr. Michael Colby. Mr. Michael Colby, please. If we can bring up his slides. There we go. Thank you for coming to my presentation. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to take cursive out and I would like to replace it. Now, cursive has been going the way of the dodo for years. And if you can't see that, you can't see the forest for the trees. Now, I'm going to ask for my next slide, please. What is cursive? It's coarse. It's coarse, like a pair of glasses that has sandpaper on the inside. You know how sometimes you prank your friends by putting some sandpaper on the inside of their glasses so that it scratches up their face, maybe gets a little bit of sand in their eyes. Oh man, that's a good joke. It's irritating, like a mosquito. Mosquitoes are irritating. They're always flying around your ears, making the buzzing noise. You can't hear anything while the mosquitoes are buzzing around your ears. And cursive is everywhere. You can't get away from it. But we need cursive. Like my dog needs fleas. So if I could, have my next slide, please. Oof. Now, as you can see, this is a picture of the average cursive writer. He's a clown. He's underdeveloped. He underperforms. He doesn't know what he's doing he's wearing his hat wrong he's got a red nose what a loser he probably goes to parties where people are talking about cursive numbers what we don't want what we want is we want to replace cursive so what isn't cursive cursive isn't this clown cursive doesn't go sideways Cursive doesn't go into the background. Cursive is useless. If I wanted to, I could go on about cursive all day long. I could do it with ease. But instead, how about I have my next slide, please? Now, what needs to change about cursive writing? As you can see, the bones of cursive doesn't go with the skin of the language. We need the bones to go with the language. We need to change writing as a whole. Cursive is useless. Cursive is old school. What we need is a new language. Don't make me beg. Don't make me get down on my knees. What I'm going to need is my next slide, please. Now, my recommendations to replace. I want to replace cursive. I want to get it out. I want nobody to know what cursive is in 50 years i want i want there to not even be cursive anyone who knows cursive they should be dead by then we can replace all cursive writing with helvetica helvetica is beautiful it's it you can read it it's so easy to read ariel bold it's bold you can see it. Hieroglyphics, they're pictures. You don't even need, you don't even need words. You can just look 
You can just look at the pictures and know what it means. Or we can have wingdings. If we have wingdings, people don't need to know what you're talking about. People never know what I'm talking about. So what's the difference if I write it in aerial bold or wingdings? Now, give me one second. I have to sneak. Now, can I get my next slide, please? Oh, my God. Now, my other recommendations. I will now list 10 fonts that I think are better than cursive. Number 10, Papyrus. Knew it. Number 9, Comic Sans. Clearly. Number 8, Arial. Seven, Arial Bold. Six, Arial Strike Through. Five, Arial Skinny. Four, Arial Underlined. Where am I? Three more. Three. Comic Sans Bold. You need that Comic Sans. Nice and big. Number two. Helvetica strike through and number one thing that I think should replace cursive is cursive oh. now whew, it's a little hot in here whew, I shouldn't have worn my fleece now can I get my next slide please <laughs> the data may surprise you who cares who cares how people are writing? Nobody. Next slide, please. Now, in conclusion, you may think that what I said doesn't make any sense and doesn't have anything to do with cursive writing, but you're wrong. Cursive writing is like an SUV stuck behind a Roman thing that I can't remember the name of. <laughs> now these Romans are trying to stop this SUV from getting down the street. Just like the parades do every time I go to Little Italy. And you know what they say. Be but a boopy. The tomato sauce. <laughs> I'll take your I'll take anyone's I'll take anyone's questions now about replacing cursive. That doesn't rhyme with sauce. <laughs> Not all poems need to rhyme, baby. Well, you kind of set us up here earlier. Zach, but... you Zach, you have a question. Well, actually, I have a question. Uh, I'm gonna uh, pull the audience if that's okay. It was a question sent in via comments. Uh, from award-winning podcast, No Time to Binge, uh, I went to a jam in Java in 1996 <clears throat> and saw Colby give a nasty sick haiku about cursive. Uh, so I guess we might as well hear this nasty sick haiku about cursive for award-winning podcast, No Time to Binge, coming out every other Wednesday. Now, I, I think I know what No Time to Binge was talking about. <laughs> Now, this was during my set when all of my poetry was about cursive writing. Mm. This one is sideways about cursive writing, and it goes like this. What is a haiku? Is it some sort of poem? We'll never know. Mm. Well, that's not a haiku, but I do appreciate it. It also is not about cursive. Yeah, that was more like 584, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, we do have another question from the audience, if that's okay. Mr. Blue Shoot Nick would say, uh, Mr. Cole Beef, what is the best wing to ding ratio? <laughs> and how do your parents feel about your life choices? Now, Mr. Blue Shoes, everybody knows the perfect distribution of wings to dings is 70% dings, 29% wings and 1% flings. 
they don't put the they don't put the flings in the wing dings hmm. because there's hardly any of them. Gotcha. My okay. parents are very disappointed in me. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Dwaskin. So I had a question on the I think it was the second to last slide, the one that said who cares? Um it was the data surprised it what surprised me was your interpretation of the data. Mm. The uh because you wrote it, you read it as who cares? But I believe it says who cares? Meaning <laughs> well, doctors, <laughs> teachers, <laughs> uh normies and uh Pedients, and uh, I wonder if, using my perspective on that for a second, what what do you think the doctors care about? Doctors, as everyone knows, doctors are the laziest people there are. So they want to keep the cursive. But what my slide represents is, who cares what the doctors want? Who cares what the teachers want, baby? Who cares what the parents want and who cares what the normies want? Nobody cares what you want. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Are there any more questions? Any more questions for me? Oh. Uh, oh. Mr. Grumpy. Yes. Thank you. Um, on one of your slides, you offered... 10 alternatives to cursive, which was actually more like three and a half with just various modifications. Mm -hmm. But I was curious because cursive is a handwriting style. Would you intend to educate everybody to write in a certain font? Because that seems like far more work for a smaller result. If, if my replacement for cursive works, nobody's going to be writing anything. Everybody has a computer with them all the time. They got their phones. They got their laptops. They got their PDFs. They got their Nokias. Anybody can write anything they want without using a pencil ever. Yeah, sorry, I forgot that you were a noted um, anarcho-linguist. Never mind. Mm. Well, we do have one more com or one more question, I guess, from the audience. Mr. Simon Vanderbland uh, asked, why can't I write my emails in cursive he wrote that in capital so i felt i had to yell that i'm going to ignore what simon says i'm going to ignore what simon says perfect because <laughs> it sounds like he is being a smart ass hmm. he knows exactly why you can't write emails in cursive all right then without further ado Let's get Mr. Michael Colby off the bongos, please. And we're going to bring up our fourth and final presenter of the night, uh, Mr. Grumpy Dylan. Yeah. Grumpy Dylan, please get to the microphone. Hello. Okay. Let's, let's start this, John. All right. Hi. My name is Dylan. Today I'm Grumpy Dylan. Uh, and today my presentation in the vein of the rise and fall of cursive is going to be on how cursive writing ruined my life and my fantasy baseball league. It also ruined a few relationships and is the reason I don't talk to my grandfather. Uh, I feel like there's very little I need to elaborate on based on the current slide. There's plenty of information to get to within the presentation. So let's just get on to the first slide, please. Now let me read a snippet of a letter my grandpeep wrote to my mother. It might be graphic, I honestly don't know, and trust me, I quit after sexual fracture. Dear Mrs. April 9, 1925. Let me, let me full screen this really quick. All right. Whither from thou loins thy spread, thy in unintelligible, unintelligible, improper for a polite audience, mast, Ship's mast. Oh, okay. There is a distinction there. I haven't read this one thoroughly. Uh, avid fan of your sexuality and disrespect in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I cannot be chosen nor crucified to the bedpost any longer. Uh, mm. Oh. Okay. Okay. Something about Plato and Michelangelo comparing her to the greats. Um. 
And of course, I'm, I am going to quit there now. That is before I reach the point about sexual fracture, but I believe the point has been made. Um, from a very young age, cursive, of course, formed an uncomfortable foundation to my relationships with my family. So anytime I see it, I am, of course, thrown back into the uh, woes of my childhood. Let's explore those woes further, potentially, in my next slide. Of course, we are going to talk a little bit about the possible Dear John letter. Um, there's only one part of this I can make out, and obviously I only had one response. Now, John was a figure who stole a previous relationship of mine, and by that I mean broke into the vault and with a team of singularly talented individuals with colorful personalities, managed to pull a heist out on the casino, which I was the floor boss on. Now, this was a time before I was grumpy. Uh, because a floor boss, even though you have to put on the grumpy face, you have to be professional. It's very hard to be professional when you're grumpy. Um, now, there's only part of the, one part of this letter that I can make out, and that is the central paragraph, which I believe the screen grab is from. Ah, uh, yes, but can you believe that my singularly talented and highly charismatic colorful crew of characters successfully pulled over the heist on your secret casino vault? The guard dogs and the bear with the blade on its arm did very little to assuage our piper. And of course, your wife has left with me inside my bag. Mm -hmm. uh, and I only had one response, which was to murder their entire family in a very public event on broadcast on national television with a fountain pen. Mm. Yes, uh, you know, keep it consistent and in character. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Now, uh, cursive usually starts in elementary school, or at least when I was a tyke. <coughs> Excuse me, tyke started in elementary school. Nowadays, they start out later because, of course, literacy has progressed to the point where people don't learn to read until they're 18. Uh, so cursive starts in high school. Uh, you're made to do cursive because you didn't want to redo your homework. Um, we were told that we had to do everything in cursive, including our math, which was, of course, the default because, as uh, Mr. Tawaskin has outlined, Numbers are already in cursive. So there was very little reason to redo your math homework. So, you know, it was just kind of like you take the grade you get, bummer if you don't get it. But my friends and I actually ran a little ring where if we didn't think that we had time to finish our assignments, like by the deadline, we would write it in script. And then when the teacher told, and by the time the teacher told us to redo them, we would have already done the research and we would be able to redo it for a proper grade. And of course, those skills carried us on to, into college were cursive in college, I was an amateur stenographer for the local court. <clears throat> of course, this is before the invention of the internet, so a lot of this is done freehand. And without the internet and with you know the advent of cursive being much earlier, it was far more common for all language, including speech, to be spoken in cursive. Um, now, I can't quite imitate that now, perhaps at the end of the presentation if I've had some time to prepare. But as an amateur stenographer, I would submit myself for jury duty because stenographer jobs were few and far between because the courts at the time were very understaffed. And I would sit in the back of the jury box with my little notepad that they give you because they give you scratch paper when you do jury duty. And I would just practice my cursive based on the disposition of all the witnesses. And there was one where it was about someone who had been tried for murdering a whole bunch of colorful, singularly talented heist characters with a fountain pen. And he kept looking at me and saying, you're the one responsible for doing this. You hired me. And I would just sit there just happily just cursiving away. And that translated to cursive in my current job with all the meetings I miss. And I can't read what's written on most of the bathroom stalls um, because most of the people we hire are Gen Z's and millennials. They don't know cursive. And that's kind of all I know how to read mm. in person. So um, I do notice my name, so I can only assume that it is praise and high, highly uh, positive reviews about my managerial style. Let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, I finally learned a few sayings in cursive, but I can't find a cursive typewriter. Um, this has been a serious roadblock in my professional development, and... I just sometimes feel like my head is made out of crumbled pieces of paper exploding out of my rustled collar. But enough about me. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this graph is weird because it is cursive stuff. Now, I know it's weird to you, but I grew up speaking this sort of thing. 
So we've got, you know, the Q axis, which is a scale of how crazy any particular substance in any particular written document can get. Hmm. And then the bottom is time. And that is how crazy a Q document gets over time. And you can see that the trend is upwards and it doesn't show the scale or the timeline on this, but it is roughly about over the course of maybe the last like six to seven years since mm -hmm. about 2015, 2016, that the trend in craziness in general content has gone up. But the cycle does indicate that it does kind of wobble like a parabola or a solabula if you only have one of those, not a pair. But um, we can only hope that the, the cycle does eventually just get to the point where it looks like cursive writing as opposed to a trend which just looks like normal handwriting. Hmm. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. Um, I didn't want to get into this, but my agent said that it was probably a good kind of public like uh, relations thing to talk about that time I tried to speak cursive to a dog. Um, now, dogs don't speak cursive. They generally only speak one or, well, no, the dog lexicon is actually very vast and complex. But for the most part, an undeveloped ear for it can only pick out about six or seven words. And those are bark, bow wow, growl, rough, whimper, uh, cheese, and please. Um, unless you have a husky, in which case they are capable of speaking um, primarily a surprising amount of the English language. Um now, I tried to speak cursive to a dog, and it just looked at me. And then I realized that it was actually a taxidermied lion from the Middle Ages. That, uh, they had never seen a lion before, and so it looked like a dog when they finished with it. Um, give me just a second. I need to clear my throat. <laughs> I thought he was going to sing that song for a second. No. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. And in conclusion... Um, I had talked a little bit about at the very beginning how this related to my relationship and how it ruined relationships and my fantasy baseball career, which uh, it was a single season and I didn't really know what I was doing. And I rolled, I rolled like a D six on all of the options. And I just took whatever the number was highest. Um, and the reason that it ruined that uh, season for me is that because when I, they wrote the checkout, I didn't actually notice that it was written in my name, so I didn't cash it before the expiration date, and I lost out on several thousand dollars in winnings. Um, but uh, I do hope that the story about how I spoke cursor to a dog reaches my estranged family, and I hope that it will guide them into reconnecting with me, because God knows I am not going to reach out to that toxic cesspit of humanity and a lack of humanity, which resides in... Uh, various other locations across the globe and i hope they don't find me so um that concludes my presentation on how cursive ruined my life and fantasy baseball league and a few relationships and the reason i don't talk to my grandfather thank you all right let's get some questions from uh uh anyone uh let's hear from zach first uh thank you first and foremost i know it was uh troublesome to go through all that again you canceled on us three different times because you didn't mm -hmm. want to get into it now if i can just have the producers bring up that one slide with that crazy graph on it the the, the graph uh yeah this one here thank you um now you said this was over the last seven years which would lead me to believe that, that last dip would be right around when COVID started if i'm not mistaken now can you get into how the pandemic affected cursive writing well, the, the cycle line of this graph, actually, if you could actually go back to the graph, I had some things I wanted to elaborate on. The, the cycle part of this indicates the cycle during normal times, and I think we can all agree that COVID was not normal times. Um, the trend during COVID was just a straight, roughly 30, 35, 40 degree incline mm. in crazy content across effectively all platforms. Um, but most surprisingly in the chat logs of the world of Warcraft players. Oh yeah. Well, that's mm. insane. The best. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, any further questions? Uh, Mr. Dwoskin. Uh, excellent presentation. Thank you for sharing. Mm. I know, I know it was difficult. Um, do you, do you believe that the cursive clinics, uh, throughout the country being forced to shut down? 
because of a, a recent ruling by the Supreme Court in Roe versus Cursive. Um, I know you didn't specifically mention it, but Roe being your grandfather's first name. Mm -hmm. should, should these things be handled more at the state level? Uh, no, because I am a fascist. And it supports my viewpoint. Oh, geez. Mm. I did not do okay. my research um, on this However, one. I do think that we need to wait to see how this decision plays out as they only very recent, very, very relevant question. They only delivered that uh, opinion about 45 seconds before you asked that question. Mm. Mm. True. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mikhail Colby. Now your last slide showed a picture of a very old lady um, next to uh, some giant dishes. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it, it, it seems to me like none of these have to do with your grandfather or your baseball season. Uh, I, it, it, I, I guess I'm just confused as to what these pictures mean at all. I'm glad you brought this up. I was wondering if it would be too subtle for the general audience. But as I was putting this presentation together with the help of my agent, he recommended in order to establish sympathy uh, in many ways that cursive have as little flourishes and useless little bits and pieces and loops and whirls to pepper my presentation with out of context pictures and irrelevant images and misrepresentations of the Sydney Opera House because it is fancy and so is cursive. Hmm. So I'm, uh, I'm glad that at least the work went noticed and re uh, remarked upon. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, actually, uninteresting. Uh, now, we do have a question from our audience. Mr. Blue Shoot Nick says, uh, Dr. Gwumpy, uh, when conducting cursive research for Curse Search, have you noticed how outstanding your smile is? No. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you for pronouncing my name correctly, actually. Um, we spell it in the old world way. and um, But, you know, it's nice to find someone who does that. Um, yeah. Have I noticed how outstanding my smile is? Yes. Um, that's why I choose not to grace everybody with it all the time because I do not want to blind people. So they can continue to write in cursive, I guess, if they want, or in whatever script they prefer. Yeah. Now, is there any more questions for Mr. Gwumpy Pants, Dylan? Okay. Thank you. So now with all the presentations given, each member of the panel will indicate which speaker they believe deserves to win the $50,000 grant awarded from some nobody's Patreon account and the collector's nostalgia prize, which I said earlier is the, I guess all the entire minus one VHS collection of the land before time series. Um, now we're going to put these in order of who went when uh, we have myself going first. We have Mr. Dwoskin going second. You have Mr. Jazzy Fingers going third and Gwumple Dumps going fourth. Now, showing fingers, one, two, three, or four. On the count of three, which of the presenters do you think should win this prize? One, two, three. Mm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Almost sweeping Mr. Jeff Dwoskin from the Cursive Institute Academy, uh, bringing in his uh, thunderous knowledge of uh, uh, Cursive Clouds, uh, Italian spoofs, and everything else. We're going to get with you after the show and find out how how I can on monetarily really just mail you all of these VHS tapes. I'm not sure how to do that. Um, but anyway... Thank you very much for being on here, Mr. Dwoskin. Thank you for taking your time and all of your beautiful words for letting all of our fans uh, over at Some Nobody's University know why Cursive is so stupid. So please, can you tell our friends and family where to find you, where to hear you, where to see you, where to smell you? Sure, and thank you. It was uh, it was an honor to come present to you guys and be part of such a <laughs> distinguished crew. Uh, Jeffisfunny.com. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Jeffisfunny.com. <laughs> is where you can find me uh, live from Detroit, the Jeff Dwoskin show uh, on all the podcasts, uh, pop culture interview show. So check that out. And thank you guys very much. Our pleasure. Well, at least my mm -hmm. pleasure. I can't speak for the other guys. Uh, Mikahol Kaholbi. 
Uh, yeah, you can find me over at uh, Jack Billings Presents on an apartment complex. Uh, you can also find me at Jack Billings Presents. I love this terrible game, a video game show about video games. And uh, Jack Billings Presents Generation Clash uh, music. Sh- well, it's not. Uh, we'll, we're about to announce season two. It's not oh. just music anymore. Um, uh, you can look up our Instagram, Jack Billings Presents on Instagram. We have little clips of all of the shows. So if you want to test out to see if you like the podcasts it has little like 45 to one minute clips um so you can see if you think we're funny Um, and also also pretty good odds also uh award-winning uh show of the year uh no time to binge uh pop culture show of the year no time to binge and funniest comedy show of the year no time to binge uh, with uh, B, who's very funny, and uh, two other guys who sort of drag me and B down. Yeah, that's true. It Comedy is, uh, ballast. It is interesting. Uh, you're such a great podcaster, yet so bad at speaking. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Grumpy <laughs> Dillwyn, where can people find you, please? Uh, you can find me at all of Some Nobody's stuff. Look up Some Nobody's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple iTunes, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, mm-hmm. Facebook, J Day, Christian Mingle, Farmers Only, that weird old one. Mm-hmm. Um, MySpace. Plenty of Fish. Yes. Oh, that one, yeah. Um, but yeah, listen to Silicon Angels, listen to CYOP Appeal. We're on No Time to Binge. This Maybe show. Yeah. Uh, uh Dylan's yeah. on Twitter at Vorpal Word. Oh, too, Michael yes. Colby's on Twitter <laughs> at Portal Turds. You can find me on Twitter at uh Corporal Nerds. You can find one of our shows at uh Mortal Birds. That's not a very good one at all. Now, Jeff Dwoska, because you won, you get to tell us what our conference for next week is gonna be. So please give it to us. Oh, the topic? Yeah. Oh, uh <laughs> Um, the socialization of Crocs. What pots or shoes? Crocs, Crocs. Yeah, the Croc pots oh, or no, crazy no. people. Oh, those, okay. The shoes. Oh, those those crocodiles. And uh, now the person oh. with the least amount of uh, of votes, well, Michael Colby. What's our slogan of the week? Power point me in the direction of some nobody's <laughs> university where we just won a fifty thousand dollars scholarship because. We're all great, and I'm gonna keep talking until yeah. uh, one of the. Let's take it so long. Get nicely and give it a little kiss on its forehead. If you have no children around the donkeys, as you can see, perfectly healthy donkeys. These are these are what donkeys look like, by the way. In case you've never seen. Them. <clears throat> Thank you for watching PowerPoint Showdown. Today's winner will receive a fifty thousand dollar grant, courtesy of some nobody's Patreon. Congratulations on your win. Join us next week for another showdown. Thanks for providing that big, 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 big prize, guys.